Aloha, this is Coco Jar Corner, and today we're going to be talking about this mysterious pendant that I always talk about, but guess what? He's here right now. This is where I got it from. So I was just explaining about the story. And so all of a sudden, I felt everything that was in that store that wasn't, you know, right. giving, me that, giving me that energy. And it's all about energy. And so I went over out to Neil's place. And next thing you know, I picked it up. And then he goes, really, I really don't know how much it is because a philanthropist left it here and he drops all of these things that he made all over the world and so I said who is this person he goes I don't know he just came in and he dropped it over here and he said whoever finds it will feel it the man said that Orpheus his name is Orpheus Orpheus he's a character also <laughs> like you do he's a character he, I, and I just, I, and I, so I said, well, whatever, I'm just going to, I said, just give me, you know, because we're already there and I, and I want it. So, we, you know, I paid for it. And, and then I looked into it and I, at first I didn't really quite understand what it is, but the more you wear it, the more you will get the message. And it's just like, um, the, exactly what it is, it's like a jellyfish. And me being a Pisces and me hearing it from my sensei that I need more water. This gives me that energy. I see it. It's hot. It's nice. um, end of February, March. Yeah. And so this is really how my journey with Microbubble started. And so it's it's really weird because at that time I was really depleting. I had a store. I don't know if you remember. The one in Queen Street. And this is where all of this is getting deja vu on what this is. And it came back, like you said, we haven't seen each other for 15 years. And so this is like, wow, this is real. Like this is not, not something you make up. And so I was really at a place at on that Queen Street, that pink building, which is called Kaimana Hale. And now I think about it. Did they used to have the salt lamp, the Himalaya lamps? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it was her, one of the sisters. And so when I had that, I had that in my store because that energy over there was not right because there was a history behind it in that pink building. And what really happened was I didn't signed up for it. I was at a trade show at the Blaisdell, okay? And if it, it was some kind of an art thing in Christmas and me and my mom was tired and this and that and then it's like, gosh, if we just had a store and just put everything there, we don't have to be dragging these things for trade show. And if anybody knows about that lifestyle, it's like three days, you, dro you drag it, make up, you know. And we do it all like you know. Yeah, and so, you know, as part of being an entrepreneur, you got to go through all of this. And then that time, I met this guy who literally got stabbed in a bath. And he left, and he said, I have everything. Can you just take over the remaining lease for it? And so I looked at my mom, and I was like, you know, sometimes when you talk too loud, it happens. And so I said, okay, I'm not going to be committed. So, you know, I talked to the landlord and they said, okay, I'm just going to ride whatever they had over there until I can find a better place. Plus it had that ambiance of old school. And I wanted that because I always had this nostalgic, you know, thing within me. And so I said, okay, but it's somewhere around here, but it's not going to be here. So I sat there for a while and then it was not good that, you know, things I end up finding after you move in, right? All the obake, as we say, <laughs> all the ghosts. So I left, came back, and so there was an in-between time. And that's when I found this. And my dog was getting, because of my energy, she was having so much skin problems, both of my dogs. 
and she was a beautiful, beautiful show dog. I mean, mind you, I mean, the whole entire litter became all champion in the first year. And so she, you know, I was doing my dog clothes and this and that, and, that, and then I had a store, and so this was totally different. Like, okay, what am I, you know? And at that time, I was already working and doing this thing called monopause, which was healing, you know, from the inside out because she was, I was paying thousands of dollars. So you were doing this on your doggy. Yes. And so, you know, I had, because I speak Japanese, I had Japanese media and all this other stuff. Japanese? Are you part Japanese? Oh, I'm 100% Japanese. My mom is from Japan. Oh, I thought you were Hawaiian. Oh no! Oh. Everybody thinks I'm some kind of different. Maybe I look that yeah, way. I don't know. Oh, I was going to see what's your mix with Hawaiian. Oh, it is. Oh, you are. Yeah, Japanese, but you're local. Japanese. I'm born and raised here in oh, Hawaii. Oh, language. Though. And so my mom is literally from Japan. Awesome. You know, I mean, like she can't. You know, to this day, she speaks more Japanese than English. Yeah, because like his parents, they were Chinese. They spoke Chinese. When yeah. He and so that's the beauty of Hawaii, that we speak all different kind of culture, but we don't look like that so when you identity Japan, of that culture, you know what I mean? <laughs> Isn't that, did they know you were Japanese when you went to Japan? No, that's why, because exactly, they thought, like I'm from Hawaii, I'm, you know. Yeah, but you but, spoke the language. But so I spoke were, the so language, yeah. like, know yeah. it, because right. I used okay. to work for the owners of um, Koksai Kogu, a company that owns all the Sheridan hotels. And so, all of that, it was so funny because you never know where destiny would take you because it was funny because the reason why I named it Kaimana Hale because Kaimana Beach Hotel was literally my grandfather's house. Oh, wow. And so his, that place used to be the gathering place because he said, F with the whatever, we're going to be making for the Japanese business people. So he had a very good foresight of what is going to happen. So from the plantation field into the, you know, he opened the first jazz bar wow. in downtown where people came off the boat, you know, from the mainland and they want to hear jazz music. Yeah. So that's where he did wow. that and he, he made a killing. And behind that was a red curtain that had the Japanese business people and all these people. And that's how really Central Pacific Bank and all these other Japanese businesses started for the community because they got together with the Hawaiians and the Chinese and the Japanese when you go back in those days. So they really built downtown Honolulu into that. And so he made that. So they said, oh, okay, Shigenaga-san, do you want the mountain or the ocean? Local Makai. And my grandfather said, go, go, go up that place, which is now known as Tantalus. And he said, no, I like that one because I want to compete what's going to come there next, he said. And so, right before the war happened, <laughs> ready to open, you know, because he used to tell all these people off, and they said, oh my God, who is this man? You're going and go to the bank and say, what's the matter with you? We built all of this money. So we have now the ability to borrow. So that's how he, you know, and then he got together with the Japanese business people, this and that, and then he built the Kaimana Beach Hotel, which was really a business hotel per se for the Japanese businessmen, because they knew it was so short, the distance of doing business. And then that's when the, the, the war broke out, and they said, how can this man, an idiot, working in front of plantation field, has all of this, so he must be some kind of spy. So they grabbed him for a in the morning, yeah and threw him into concentration camp with a whole bunch of other people, mm. you know, because they thought this is, there's no way right, 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 that right. this person from a plantation right. field gonna be opening one hotel right. out here on the beach, yeah. Kaimana Beach Hotel. I thought they took all the Japanese people. So they did. He was a, one of the first one because oh. they had to go get, you know, so they rally all of them in and then, you know, the rest is history. And so when he came back, he started, you know, the Meiji Kai and all this other so stuff. So how long did he have to stay within that country? Oh, he was yeah. three, four years. Oh, they cool. they put him through, because they, they beat him up like a pole. Oh, because they thought, and he was like, 
I didn't do anything wrong. I just knew that this is when he was young. How old was he then? Because at that time, I'm not sure, probably in his 40s, because he had two sons, and this was the interesting part. His sons were actually fighting as an American. Sure, sure. Right, right. Well, their dad is in concentration camp. Right, right. Go figure that that out. (laughs) So that's why too bad Jerry wasn't here because he's Japanese too, right? And his mama, oh, she's older. And I was going to ask him, did they put your mama in a concentration camp? Oh, they were all over the mainland. Yeah. All broken up. Oh, Jerry's a healer. I mean, he's a healer. Right. He does does all this work about how to take care of. Well, it's just spiritual. Oh, it's very spiritual. Oh, yeah. Very spiritual. Uh, Jerry, that you didn't Well, you know, we'll have another yes, session. Yeah, This yeah. is my office now. I don't, since I don't have Kilo, I had moved on the square for a little while. And then we went down to Shirakia. You know, the, the, oh, yeah. The garden, the Japanese garden, the beer garden. $4 for a pitcher of beer. Oh, wow. So that's when I get like four or five guys. Even sometimes only, almost 10 guys just come down and girls just have our poo-poo's and just talk stories and mostly it's social but we did business and uh, that's how it is yeah and, and now this is my office I, I also I do a lot of internet so my other office for the cheap stuff that I sell is at Time Supermarket's food court there's food court outside you see the- how how we have all have to change from those days yep. And I, I, I don't ever want to go back and do a brick and mortar. Yes. Yes. That's what happened to me. And I was mentioning to you, from Queen Street to Kapilani was a huge jump. Because I was literally doing this micro bubble thing at home because it worked on my dog. So, so you said you do it for yourself too. Yeah. So the first machine was actually invented in oh, Japan. It's a machine. In 2003. And it's a huge, chunky, chunky machine that weighs over like 30, 40 pounds. And it's with electric. It's small. And so that's what happened. That was back in the days in 2003, the first machine that this Japanese professor made. And so people in Japan was telling me, and I was telling them the problem about my dog having surgery. I paid 1500 to break her open. I don't know why they had to do that. Saying that her skin problem is coming from the inside. Which probably is correct, but they didn't really cut her up, and then they, they cut her up the wrong way, and they sewed her up. And so I was like, you know what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know how long uh, it took for her to heal? I'm sure. And so all of this, I was like, you know, putting all my energy, and that's why I was, you know, and so I said, you know what? So I went out there to see what it is, met with all these people. And I said, Ara, I have a way. Let me incorporate mana pause. And so I created this and I actually trademarked it in Japan a long time ago, back in 2004 or 5. But nobody knew the technique. And so then I brought in that water and, you know, into Hawaii, I mean, the machine into Hawaii, because they brought it for me. And I said, oh my God, let me incorporate my technique with this micro bubble machine. And I start to do but that. They, did they call it a micro bubble? Oh yeah, it was called micro bubble because that's what, what they were they using it for originally. It's nearly for dogs. dogs, dogs and dogs. so Japan is so ahead of their ways in doing natural healing. Yes, right. And so this micro bubble thing, really what it is, is is one one thousand goes deep into the skin and takes out all the impurity. Yeah. Because it's negative ion and positive ion. And positive ion is all the impurity. Right, right. And so it's so small that it goes deep in and it lifts up all of so, that. So how, but how do you use it? You don't stick it in your body, right? Oh, no, it, it's water. Because you got to wash your dog. So I said, this is such an oh, ABC so thing. water in this machine. And so you hook up this machine nice. with the water yeah, yeah. at a certain temperature and hit the you, trigger you point. Tell me a little bit about that when you first came here. But what yeah. kind of water? Just any kind of water? Any kind of water. Water. You can just hook it up. So back then, if you're lugging this huge machine. <laughs> on top of that, it's Japanese voltage. So you have to put a step down. And so, you know, you got to deal with all of that. So I created...
created that, like homeopathic starts from home, right? So I gave up that Queen Street, went back home to deal with my problem, which was ongoing. And that's when I said, your problem with your dog. My dog, and that's when, when heaven, not heaven, excuse me, Coco, I was doing it, and I even had found that video of me doing it, and she, it worked. And I wish the pet we didn't get rid of that video because I was complaining about how, you know, all of this, I was making that documentary. Back then we didn't have the iPhone, you know what I mean? So anyway, so that's gone, that video. But anyway, so, you know, and so I was like, oh my God, it works. And so I said, let's take this into the next level and heal it. And that was my promise to make this into something. So I worked with Japan and then I started it in back of my, literally back of my home in and I end up looking like to my neighbor, probably like a drug dealer, because every hour on the hour, people are coming to my house, bringing their dog, and I'm flipping dogs left and right, and I'm like, oh my God, how much pounds did I do? Like 70 pounds, 700 pounds of dogs? Literally, because when you think about it in one week, you have 60 pounders, 30 pounders, and I'm over there like doing it, so I needed help, so I had some help. And then Japan got hold of this, like, what are you doing back there? Like, what is this? I said, homeopathic starts from home and this thing and this machine. And I added in, you know, this combination. And I have my doggy shampoo line, which I went to Japan. Because now I can travel because I'm not lo locked into my brick and mortar. So my mind is like... So you got this machine and you just run the water through the machine and then you use the water to wash the dog. Correct. Oh, and that's what clears up any problem. Because that is a special patented head that they created. And so what happened was I created my own line of shampoo, yeah. which the thing is that because there is so much chemicals out here that is, you know, that other countries, they don't even say it. They don't even use it because it's illegal. And a lot of these things, so I looked into it because I'm one of those nerds that got to look into something. So I said, you know what? Nobody can make my shampoo. I got to go back to Japan. So I went there <laughs> and I investigated, deep investigation into it because it just so happened. It was so funny because the guy who runs one of the biggest Japanese grooming schools in Tokyo, the Kocho Sensei, the principal, he and I used to work for the same company, Kokusai Kogyo. I worked in Honolulu, he worked in Japan. Because he was like, how do you speak, how do you know how to speak Japanese and all these things? It's like, oh, because I used to work for Kyoya company, Kokusai Kogyo. And he's like, not. <laughs> Shouldn't we put her on Bolero? And so I was like, then they're like, this is so, and like, we're like, not. I mean, what are the chances, right? And so I, because I was convincing him about my technique and bring it, because Japanese people, the machine is already there. The technique is not really there. And so I said, okay, so I worked with them. And then I, they're like, oh my God. So they like, I said, I don't read, because they're that, I mean, that's a huge corporation. When they made this machine, didn't they know that they were doing something? Uh, what did they, they, they did it. When they but made they, the machine, what was special about the way they made it? The, 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 the reason why it was so special because it was the first patent dog for dog care. So it was made for dogs. It made for dogs. And really, it was just where you, you just, because anybody knows how to wash a dog, right? But this goes deep into the skin. But did they know that when they were making the machine, they put something in it that would be... It's a shower natural. head, which is, which, is the, which is the micro bubble which create all these little nano bubbles. Like a regular shower is just shower and it just surface shower. Whereas the micro bubble is so small because it's why it's micro and nano. Now it's nano, micro nano bubble. And it goes deep into the skin. And so it's not this, this is regular water. Oh, so, it's so you're a just putting water like this. this. And energy that's so creating that. it goes deep into there and it brings oxygenation deep into the skin. Okay. Whereas regular this, you go and it falls right off. This okay. is so small so that, that changes the whole element. The dynamics yeah. into yeah. Your, your skin because the skin is your largest organ of the body that acts like a third kidney. 
I don't care what you are, any mammals, any human, any, that is the largest, and if we don't detox that, so it's detoxing your skin. And so the thing is, is that it's a therapeutic way, but then I put the technique of the therapy into it, because you can shower, you can micro bubble, but if you don't hit the trigger points, because our body is made out of over 80% of water, so is the dog, so is any animal. And so if we don't flush it out, guess what? You're stuck with a whole bunch of garbage in your body and that's how you get kidney problems, that's how you get liver problems. Has anybody ever recorded this for you? Or done this? Have you made a whole thing of it? I should because this is yes, because this is really something that is yes, just right you should and and, and yes you, you can I, I can go on and people will be like I'll be at trade shows and people will be like I will literally have like a whole crowd in, in at the super zoo in, in Las Vegas and people is like come here and I do that thing and they're like and I start reading them and what's going on they're like how do you know how do you know I said because your skin does not lie because all of this has a meridian line a trigger point is connected to the some kind of organ in your body. And so it's like the aha moment. It's like it's so simple. They're like, ah, oh, I get it. And I'm like, exactly. And so this is why it's like they need the foundation, the machine, like my second hand, because no no human being can create that. You can massage it, you can lomi lomi it. But you can't go deep into the skin. But if you can put your assistance of your other hand and know where to do it. Hello. That's the same thing. All, you the have same a great idea. idea. As I'm a psychophysics out there because I study in San Francisco. Okay, what it is, the sound goes into your cellular system. And what that does is clears up that part. You know, ooh, you know, and, and twinning forks and that kind of thing. So that's the same idea of this water thing that you're saying with all these micro things. Exactly. So, tiny bubble. Don Wu is coming in and helping me. <laughs> it's energy and I got my hand what? to do the hula. <laughs> so, so, so and anyway, bring you, it into you it. make the water and then you use that to wash your face and your body. No, 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 that. no. That was before just heating only for dogs. Yeah, I know that. And that wasn't that. Was and so that's why, like, Japan was like, What is this? No, 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 no. Yeah. So they came and yeah. they're like, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't handle all these people coming in, and this thing is working. So that's when we opened up in Kapilani Boulevard, and that place was huge. And so I had to go and change, and I had everybody sign it. Oh, that was in 2010. So you've been doing this for a while. That was the orange building. The orange building. I went from the pink building to the orange building, and that building was so ugly. And I told the landlord, and I said, you know what? You have location, 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 and a great parking, but it's ugly, this building. Can I paint it? And they're like, what color? I said, purple. And they're like, huh? And I said, I'm going to make it orange. And then so I was like, because orange, why? Because right over there, we can see the sunset, yeah, I mean the sunrise and the sunset. But it stood out. I, that's, that's Monica's place. Exactly. <laughs> and we're the happiness in between. The whole entire orange will be there with the happiness and the dog. My color is orange. It's, 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 I don't know why. But it is. Said that orange. I don't know how I got the orange. And I said, you were in the purple and orange. Yes. <laughs> you see? Because it gives you that, that power, that strength, and that royalty of light. And so I actually did a conversation about this. Why did you make it orange? And I did that with the midweek. But well, anyway, so I had that thing going. I had teaching my, my, my employees. Did anybody ever record you or put you in the news? Or oh, yeah. You I, I, had, I have archives of that. I even, you know, it was so funny. Way back then when I had the Hawaiian moving company with Michael W. Perry, he actually came to my house when I was first doing doggy wear design. You know, and so, you know, the thing is, is that if I do something, I got to do it where there is something that is eco-friendly, that makes sense, and, and that is long-lasting. 
And so that was my really my journey. And then, you know, like I mentioned, the rent. Can you imagine? I was just right over there, in the middle over there, being all glamorous as a doggy emporium spa, and then they shut down the sidewalk. They shut down the road to build all the condominiums. And I said, are you kidding me? And one day I remember it was like almost closing and I felt like, oh my God, we gotta hurry up and close. We gotta hurry up and I don't feel right. An escapee was running behind of that back alley. And I said, you know what? This is gonna get dangerous. Because once they start construction, you're opening people to come in because nobody's gonna be there. You have open places, a lot of homeless, and, and why am I paying going to be a skyrocket in red? And so I said, you know what? My accountant said, get out of there. Just get out of there. And I'm like, what am I going to do with all my customers? I have like, and I didn't know I had that much customers until I came back, you know? And, and so I said, okay, so whatever. And then I continued that at home. And it was like, there is something more. Because I've already created the manual because I had employees to teach them, but they hadn't signed the NDA. But then I said, there's something more that I need to do. And I literally was doing donkey makeover with Kate Joen too. And I said, you know what? I got to stop all of this, you know? And so they actually called me a month later. They said, can you just come back and just tell them that you're going to go on hiatus? And I said, why? And they said, because people thought you were like one of the top side show that we're having because I was doing doggy makeover for dogs to be adopted for the Oahu SPCA or something and we give them a new glam and we talk about you know me I'm Portuguese so I can go on and on and talk about any kind of subject you know like from doggy treats you know what you do with this and that it's, it's, an, an, expression. <laughs> it's an expression that we use <laughs> well you talk she's, a lot she's Portuguese right Oaxaca <laughs> Right? And so that really took me to where a lot of people didn't know that I had gone through two car accidents. And that was a time it was, I needed to take a break and say, you know what? The energy here of Kapilani, the next one, I can't keep dragging myself because you know, literally five people died. My dad died, my two best, my friend got shot, my other friend got, you know, cancer died, my auntie died, my dog Jordan died, and I was like, you know what? I can't even mourn. I can't even, but I'm, I'm empty. Cause that was daddy's girl. Jordan was my first baby dog boy, you know? Right, right, right. And so I was all just- all happened the same time. Oh well, yeah, so I said, okay, time to go. My accounting is right, everything's not going, you know, because you do find these narrow arrows that you can help. The outer world is just squeezing you in, literally, every penny you make. Then you have employees, you know, going on sick leave, then so they can get painkillers and they on their own drugs and whatever. You know, you deal with a lot of stuff, you know, and I dealt with a lot of things where you can't help. And so it's like, I need to help myself. And so the second car, because I was like, you know. Were you, so you were alone in the car when you had the accident? Yes. The first car accident, I knew that was going to happen in Kahala. So why did you know it was going to happen? You just felt it because this uh -huh. Japanese um, student, she just bang and then I was like, oh my God. Okay, so that was that. And I did the traditional way, and that's why it got me really into homeopathic and natural way because I was literally like painkiller, drugged up, and all like. I can't focus, but I didn't have a store. And maybe that's why I was wanting to anchor myself down. That's before you had the store. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, so one of my friends said, you got to try Bikram Yoga. And I was like, what the hell is Bikram Yoga? They said, listen, you're into detox, you're detoxing a dog. You're going to start to understand this. So I was like, Okay, there's one in Hawaii Kai. Let's go. I went in there. I was like, what is this? This is hell. It's so hot. I was like, I can't even bet. I, hello, I just went into a car accident. And I'm fat and I'm no, I don't feel good. And you're making me be in the sweat room? Uh-uh. But 
I was locked in there for like 90 minutes and I don't know what happened because there's only mirrors around and the only person that could help me was myself. And that's when I got the aha moment, like, wait a minute, there's something in here that I need to continue. So I continued and I continued and I continue for one year, I put a challenge of how far I can do, I hit 100. And I was like, oh my God, I'm feeling good. I'm not in anything. I'm feeling high. I know what's hey, going hey, on. What is the name of this area? Like it's called Bikram Hot Yoga. Awesome. And Never so where you, where it's literally is 90 minutes of hot yoga at 105 degree with 40% give her so humidity and you're up by yourself and no there's a whole bunch of people oh, but so, you so, get blinded oh, 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 because oh, oh, oh. that's why there is but a there's mirror an instruction they're telling you what, what to, to do. do right and yeah. so i was like whatever it is and the thing is it's 26 postures two breathing exercise and there's a sequel so there's no excuse like you don't know what to do because you go to other yoga is different it, it varies you know this yeah. and that and it probably works yeah I've done but yoga. this one is is more like boot camp. You kick your ass, <laughs> and the only person is Lily is yourself that you you have to battle, and that was a challenge. Lily Sue, hmm? Lily Sue, they what? What was her name? Lily. What was her last name? Lily Sue. He wants to know what her name was. Who? Oh, so I hate. The, 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 the oh no, um, I forgot. Oh no, it was Manny. It was Manny. He owned that studio oh, in Hawaii. Oh, oh, and so you know, I did it, and then. And then I was like, okay, wow, I don't know what it is, but I keep on going to this gasoline station. <laughs> it's like literally a gasoline station, and you get, after you finish, like, I don't know what happened, but I'm high, and this is a natural good high, and I jump in a pool, and, oh, yeah, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. it was like, detox, and it made sense. Ever drank kava? Yes. I went to Fiji, and I tried that. Oh, oh no, I, I started in the big island. Yeah. Kava is supposed to be excellent. As a matter of fact, I wrote up a whole article that was published. In Actually, my friend does it. that out here too. She started a kava company. I don't know where she is. Yeah, well, I used to grow it, not well, right near me. But anyways, I don't have it anymore. I had it Lily with the um, in Fiji, and that's another whole different story. Well, that's why a whole, that's I a tried whole natural that. thing that keeps you oh, stressed is. and everything. Oh, I have a whole article. I just ran across it the other day. I wrote it for a magazine in, in Arizona. Yeah, kava is really good. Yeah, you know, and 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 that's yeah. no, no, it is because no, it's no, a we had we had ava bars in, in the, on the Big Island. Right? Oh, so okay. All the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so, literally, it was where I just had to kind of like take off. Why? Because one of those people that passed away, he was a pool guy across the street, and he's always saying. You know, Monica, people don't see what's across the street in this beyond the fence and what people go through. And sometimes in life, you need to take off. And we had this long subject at Sandy Beach. We're talking, you know, because, you know, everybody hang out back in the days at Sandy Beach. And, you know, because he, I know him because he's a pool guy and he went to the same school across the street. And then that day, it was, it was like, we had a, such a great moment. And then the next day I found out, committed suicide oh, and, he died. Died. and so I was like wow and that like really st stuck in my head and so you know all these things that you know you miss because you're back at home because you're so busy working out on the you know pay for somebody else rent for their brick and mortar store that you forget all these things what he what he was saying and which made a lot of sense. And more and more, I did Bikram Yoga, more and more. So I was like 100, 150. And that's when my friend said, guess what? I said, what? He goes, he's in town. I said, who's in town? He said, Bikram. I said, Bikram who? He goes, the yoga that you're doing, the man who created Bikram Yoga, Bikram Chattery. And I said, oh, okay. So they said, oh, we're gonna go and have a, you know, little potluck out at, at, at Sherwood Beach. So I said, okay. And so I, I don't know what to make. Oh my God, I don't know. This is man is like, wow. Then I, because you read about it, because he has this huge franchise all over the world. This little Indian man. And so I said, okay, I don't know. Everybody call him a guru, everybody this and that. And I'm like, it works. So I said, okay, I want to thank him because the system that he created works. Because I get it, because I created for my micro bubble this system. 
and how it detox from the dog. So I said, okay, this probably be a fun time to meet him. So I went there, I made this curry, shrimp curry. Does everybody bring, you know, yeah. kalbi and all the other stuff? So I said, okay, he's Indian, he's gonna go make a little bit of Japanese, Japanese Hawaiian curry, so I made that. So we did that, and next thing he said, who made this curry? And I'm like, <laughs> and I said, I did it. He said, who taught you how to make this curry? And I said, oh, my mom and, and my, my, my old boss. And I said, huh? And he started talking Japanese. And then I said, oh, I used to work for, you know, Kosai Kobio, Mrs. Osano. She used to always cook her curry up in her, you know, pet, her room and penthouse at Bona Surf Rider. And we'll come there and she'd do this and that. And I kind of mix it and he goes, I taught you the curry. <laughs> and I said, no, it was Eiko Osano who taught yeah, me a little bit. And he said, and he starts singing in Japanese. And I said, eh? And I said, how do you know this karaoke? How do you know this song? He goes, he goes, I told you, I'm the one who taught you the curry. And then I said, well, that's weird because that is Mrs. Osano's, one of her favorite, Juhachiba's favorite song. He goes, because she's my Japan mom, and I went, what? <laughs> and I said, he goes, his mother just passed away. So he brought this album that had Mrs. Osana way back in the days in 1970, where he started. And it was Mrs. Osano, the one who brought him to where he is today. She took him because she was on a wheelchair. She weighed over 200 something pounds. And she had surgery, she couldn't move. Yes. And so next thing you know, it was like... So is he the one that did the yoga? Or, or he created Bikram, right. Bikram Yoga. Okay. And so that's history right there. And I'm like, this is weird. And so he goes, and I said, no, 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 no. You can't know Mrs. Osana because she's literally royalty. She's had bloodline from the emperor family. And that's a billion dollar company and she's the Kaichino Oksama, she's the chairman's wife. I'm not getting it, where does yoga come into all of this? He goes, well, come over, I will show you the album, how she used to look like. And I said, this is weird, because he was inside where his sensei, Bushna, the guru, which is, guess who his brother is, Yogananda. So this man was related to her or had just somebody that taught her? That taught her. And so it was so weird because his history, if you know about Yogananda, he's the one who created self-realization and he's the one that, the book that Steve Job has, his brother, Bushna Boshna, is Bikram's teacher. And he was the one who created, helped create Bikram Yoga. Because he sent Bikram to Japan. Because they get it, and I can understand it. they get it. And so that's when he was living upstairs, and the downstairs have a kimono shop. And that's where all the rich, you know, ladies comes in, and this and that. And then the kimono man with the hunchback, and the next thing you know, Nakajima-san, which is Mrs. Osano's sister, comes in, and she said, ah! The kimono says, all of a sudden, he's like this, and he said, what happened to you? And he said, I got fixed by the Indian Guru Sensei upstairs. He said, Kanda kore. So next thing you know, Nakajima-san brought her sister, which is Mrs. Eiko Osano, there. And then she, that's how she started doing water therapy of yoga using this technique. And I said, oh my God, this is so weird. Like, da 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 da. You know, and so next thing you know, it's like that's how. And then Miss next thing you know, Mrs. Oksano, she's off the wheelchair. She is back as being who she is, beautiful. So she took him under her wing and like sponsored him and told him, "You need to teach him." So he went to Todai, Tokyo University, and all these university, and they they literally did the whole entire research and study. 
And in Japan, it gets really cold. So they used to bring heaters to keep the temperature. And so that's how all of this developed. And it was so weird, like how his technique that he learned, put it into 26 sequence, two breathing exercise, and created this huge empire called Bikram Yoga, this franchise. And so I was like, this is so weird. Like he goes, I know, of all the students I have all over the world, how come? And I'm like, I know. It's did, did you have that at that time? Were you wearing your um, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. And so I was like, this is, so, you know, to make a long story short, we go there and of course, he's like, okay, you know Tomura-san, you know Hosoya-san, you know all these people, but do I really know that you know her? I'll eat my shrimp. And Sorry. so I said, no. he got a point there. So he goes, go call her. And I said, I don't have her number. I mean, I I don't work there. It's been like 20, 30 years. I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna call her. I don't have her number because I do. And I went, what? And I'm like, oh my God, all of a sudden it is like panic, right? What if Mrs. Osano doesn't Probably remember you? She's probably like 70, 80 something years old. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. So he called her. He gave me the number. And then he's obviously, she see an 808 number. And so I said, oh, can't you know some of China stuff? They said, oh, who is it? I said, this is Monica. And I knew that voice on the other end, which was her sister-in-law. And I said, what does that? She said, ah, So we talked and this and that, and I'm like panicking, like, okay, step one, pass, clear. Now I'm gonna go to, you know, the chairman of the right. board wife now. This is the billionaire, right? And then I'm like, oh God, I'm God, I'm God. So I said, oh, go beside the table, Monica desu, and then she's like, and it was like dead silent. Yeah. And she goes, Dare? Huh? Monica? And he looked at me and I looked at her. I'm like, oh my God, she doesn't remember me. And then she goes, and then it clicked in my head because we had two Monica. And so they knew me as Nanae. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she's probably thinking, Monica? Yeah, I'm Monica. But the voice is not Monica. Yeah. And so I was like, <gasps> and she's like, so they show? And everybody went, ha 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 I was like, oh my god. <laughs> it's like sweat trickling down. I'm over here for a full place. Like she doesn't remember, but I can't help it. But you forgot there was a different nickname. Nickname that I used, yeah. another alias name. <laughs> and so she's like, oh, Genki this God. So we went to the whole entire formality and then she's like, why are you calling me after 20, 30 years? And, and I'm like, you will not guess who I'm sitting next to. And this person is the one who told me to give you a call. And she said, who? And then he got on the phone and she was like, oh. and I'm like, everybody was like, like, oh my God, this is like really happening. Like this, and then so he's like, okay, then I can fly to Japan. and meet up and, th and he hasn't seen her for like well, she's back in japan then. oh yeah she oh, lives yeah. in japan and so he hasn't seen her because he left japan to because everybody don't believe this story but because of mrs osana's high you know um ranking, ranking in japan in position her husband actually was the one who was really running japan kenji osano and anybody who knows the history about Kenji Osana and it is Kiroko de Gozaimasen knows about it. So that's why it's like, it's a different world. Right, right. But you, when you know her, you were in Japan. Oh, no, she, she so comes here, here because I was working for the owner's office. Right, that's what like yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, and so all of this, because I was literally her brother-in-law because her, her husband died, Kenji Osana. Oh, yeah. And... The, the, during those days, that's when she was in a wheelchair, and that's when this guru man cured her to get off the wheelchair, yeah, yeah. and they traveled all over, you know, him being her guru. Right. right. And at the same time, 
it was weird because it's like nobody knows things like the Sheraton Palace Hotel or the Sheraton Townhouse, and he was part of all of that. And I'm like, this is so weird. So he and I had this like secret story of a story <laughs> behind a story. Yeah, your histories, yeah. And so it was like, after all of that, it was like, he goes, wow. And I'm like, wow, like, you know her. He goes, yeah, you know her too. You didn't work for her. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. He traveled with her, didn't he? And he, he did. Her, yeah. And so the reason why he stopped is because his guru said, you need to get married. You need to do something. So he jumped on the plane because anything that guru, his guru, like in India, right? So he was young then. Yeah, he was young in like 20, 25 oh, or so. And so, or you know, 30s. And right. so he was doing all of his things when he, you know, building this Bikram Yoga, the same thing I was going through, you know? And so then that's when he said, they took him, they got the thing in Japan. So he brought all of that archive, you know, back to the United States. And during that time, President Nixon was in Hawaii. And he was stuck at Kui Lima, couldn't move. So Tanaka Kakue, the Prime Minister, said, okay, I'll send you this little Indian guru over there. He went there, he fixed President Nixon. Nobody really knows about this, okay? Next thing you know, President Nixon gives him the green card and said, you know what, they need you in LA, in Hollywood, and so, he literally got the free pass to go to Beverly Hills and start teaching this yoga in wow. Hollywood. Yeah. And so it was like all of that, and next thing you know, his guru said, you need to get a wife. So he set them up, and he married Roger Street. They have two beautiful kids, and that is that. Next thing you know, that is one history, one seeding of all of this, and it's like, oh, from that shrimp curry literally <laughs> and so I was like how did that happen so of course obviously he loves Hawaii we have this connection so he used to come to Hawaii and you know he had this vision and I said okay and then I said I see what you're saying and I'm good about vision you know and I wrote a whole entire proposal project and he's like I gave it to him he's like this is exactly what I want to do and he says, in my 17 project. Because how do you know? I said, I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of, I don't know. Connection, yeah. And so that happened. And then, you know, I'm still at home trying to figure out, go back this. How long ago was this? This was back in 2013, 14. And so he was coming and then he realized that, okay. Then one day, you know, because when he comes, there's a lot of people eating with him, all this stuff. And I was, you know, part of that doing yoga and feeling good and getting into all of that and at the same time healing you know I needed that healing because you know all of a sudden you, you you jump from one frying pan to the next frying pan from business to mourning to lost and a lot of loss lost in everything and so that really got me deeply like okay then he came one day he said oh we got to go eat dinner so I met him and I'm like where's the rest of the people and he goes, and, you know, his driver. And then he goes, you know what? I already know who you are and what you can do. I don't need your resume. Can you come and help me in LA? Because I don't trust anybody. And I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, to headquarters. You have a headquarters. I need somebody over there. And I know you know business. I know I can trust you because if Japan mom can trust you, the family, I can trust you. Plus, you don't know anybody in LA, you know? So I said, okay, all right. Because I'm not into TV, I don't know what's going on. So I said, and then before he left, I said, you know what? I'll go back with you for five days. Give me five days, give me this, where I can check up, you know, headquarters, you give me the turnkey, and I can see your employees, I can see what's going on and everything. So okay, then that was that. I got to know his family, I got all of that, and then I and then I said, okay, bye. And I told him what is what is going on with his company. And he's so like, he what? Oh, I see. 
And I said, well, there's going to be a lot of problems, and this is what it is, so you better, you know, hold on for that ride. And then a month later, he calls me, so what are you going to do about it? And I said, I don't know, what am I, it's not my problem. What am I going to do about it? It's not having nothing to do with me. I just told you what I see. Then he says, it's my wife's birthday, her 50th birthday, so jump on a plane and celebrate. And I said, I'm not going to go, you know, jump on a plane and go there. And, you know, your wife going to think, like, well, she came here one month ago. Why am I jumping on a plane to go to her birthday party? I'm not into all that kind of stuff, you know. And so I said, no, I'm going to rest on that one. And then something just kept on tugging me because I didn't want to be, you know, a celebration and a, a, a strange person come back again and, you know, I, I, I don't want that. Because I kind of felt that in a way because nobody knows Japan mom. And the way he and I talk and laughing and talking Japanese, it's not really like, who is this person, right? And so that's that. And then I just said, okay, let me get something situated. You know, I arranged stuff and I said, I'm already at this age. What do I gotta lose? I need, you know, I need to know, you know, this thing about franchise is very interesting. How this one technique, whether it's a human or a dog, he created an empire all over the world. 24 7, 365 days, somebody in this world is doing good from him. And he has a system like how I have. But mine's with dog. But I haven't done it yet besides, you know. So I went there and I said, okay, boss. I got all of this. I have a business that I'm gonna put on hold. I mean, you know, I'm in research and development because I, you're clicking something in my brains and I need to develop this. Give me six months. You can do your research and development or whatever you want to call it, or India, whatever the thing. I'm just a yoga guru, and I have a problem in headquarters. Six months turned to six years. Oh, good heavens, really? Wow. It turned into... So were you, did you stay in L.A.? I, yeah, because, you know, sometimes when you wish for things, and it happens because I said, I don't want to, tra LA traffic, I heard about it, I don't want to deal with it. If headquarters in, in Beverly Hills, and you live in Beverly Hills, I ain't going to be driving like, like a chicken without no head, because that's how I'm going to look like, because I don't know. And I said, I need to, you know, this, this, this. The pay wasn't there, but I'm not going to complain, because it's just for six months. months. No, so I had to, like, literally close everything down, because <laughs> My micro bubble machine that they made for me, a smaller version, because that big chunk of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I opened my store, I told that to Japan and I said, I can't, that's liability, that big huge thing, and people can get electrocuted. I want a smaller machine that is compact. And so they, I found people to create that machine, which I did. And that's why I was going to trade shows back again at showing people, being speaker at the pet, you know, summit, and this and that and all that. I was, you know, going back into that ground where I knew I had something, but I just had to develop it into the market. So I did all of that, and and and, and so. But you were brought, you were working with him in his yoga thing. And so I was like, okay, I can't do two things. Right. So let's because of Japan can't make this into a bigger production or warranty and guarantee and all that. Thing because everything is made in Japan and no matter how much time I had people out here, electrician try to fix my machine, nobody could do it. I had five people, nobody could do it. So I said, listen, the machine is not working. I have to do this and this is not a business where I cut this thing is gonna break down, da 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 and so it's not gonna happen. So that's when I had that break and I said, Okay, Bikram, I'll help as a consultant, a business consultant, because that's my forte. You know, I can look in and figure out what the gut is. Oh, the, the, that's and your a, detox business. That's probably person. your psychic stuff because it's not your really education and training, right? Well, I did graduate with hotel management oh, okay. and I did work with, you know, like big corporations. I see, I see. 
And so business, well, you have the I have the experience of over 30 years, uh -huh. including my own business. And so I went in and dug out. It's worse than a New York subway, you know? There's she, she like all like these the things. Thing. I just saw on TV about the thing that they're corrupting Trump, you know, how they're investigating. <laughs> and so like me, like I just, I, that's, that's me. You know, if I'm gonna dig in, I'm gonna dig in and dive into it. And I dived into it and I'm like, this is so weird what's happening. Yeah. And sure enough, boom. You know, I got my I got myself situated location where I don't have to be driving so I can focus on my business, focus on why I'm here for six months and get it done. Right, 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 right. You know, and so I did that and next thing you know, he was involved with sexual harassment. Lawsuits after lawsuits after lawsuits and I said, I don't like this lawyer over here. You're gonna lose. I don't like this and this I don't even want to touch his dad. And he'll be like, What is wrong with you? And why I said, was no, 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 sexual no. harassment it's because of well, somebody, it goes way back into literally the person who created it in 2010 called Pandora William, where she went to teacher training and she sued him for discrimination and all this other stuff. So that opened and triggered because they couldn't take that to court because they settled out of court with insurance money. That's when you see a whole bunch of lawyers say, wow, we have a brand name. It's so easy because this man is in a Speedo. He, he has very bad mouth. They saw literally the Pandora box. And so, so many people came in and started saying that, accusing him for sexual harassment. And I went in there like, oh my God, what is this going on? I have to meet with lawyers and I have to meet with all of this. I have to go to court. Because I, I knew way too much, and I knew that lawyer wasn't <laughs> wasn't where he is. Yeah, wasn't when there. during the trial, yeah. he turned around. That his lawyer, because yeah. I told him, you better be careful of this man. Yeah, yeah. His energy is yeah. not there. He's right. not there for the right reason. He right. said, you don't know. You just from Hawaii. Da, 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 da. He's known. Da, 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 da. He's with. Da, da, da. And I'm like, whatever. So I sat there, mm. and <laughs> literally, he didn't know I was there. That lawyer turned around, he saw me, and he told Bikram, get her out of here. Get her out of this courtroom. Because he felt that you knew that he was wrong. I knew something more than he knew. And when that happens, right, and especially in that big, huge media frenzy, and this is right before Bill Crosby case, or before the Me Too movement, because hashtag Me Too, was why I started this thing where it was funny because all of these things that happened, everybody was copying things, hashtag me too, hashtag me too. And that became something I told the lawyer because a lot of these are copying things and I found all these files in the back office in a, in, in a secluded cabinet. <laughs> and this girl claims to be his lawyer and I said, she's not a lawyer because she was involved and that's a whole different Story, what I found out because she, the one that first one that came because she, she was smart enough because she had the inside information and she got to court before everybody else, before all of these other Jane Doe's. And she said, I was working for him as his in house counsel. And she said all of this stuff. And then it was like, no, 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 honey, do you know who you are? Look yourself in the mirror. Because she had a huge clock skeleton in her closet and, you knew that. and I knew that because and so that was another thing and so no, did you know it or just psychically did you know it no I knew her energy was not there that's what I'm saying yeah. yeah there was a lot of things that doesn't fit right a lot of these things so I'm just putting things into pieces because you can you can only use so much of your ability but you need to bring in all of the other things right right right, right. you know like, there is a New York subway, but underneath all that guff, there must be a railroad track. Right. <laughs> and and the, 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 the bells and whistles yeah, yeah, exactly. underneath all of that, and the cockroaches and all right. that other sewer right. rats right. and all yeah. that other things that right. exist underneath yeah. there. And whether what happened, nobody knows. Only God, him, and the accuser. But I'm not there for that. I'm looking for 
what I'm supposed to do. Whether it happened here or me, I have no judgment, okay? I'm a professional, I do what I need to do. So they kicked you out of the court. So he kicked me out, I'm sitting outside, I call his wife and she's like, get back in there! And I'm like, why did he kick him out? What kick you out? I said, well, obviously, he knows that I don't like him and he feels that energy that he knows that, you know. So the guy that kicked you out, you called his wife? Or no, no, I called Vikram's wife. Okay, not the guy that kicked you out. No, no, he's oh, a lawyer. Oh, right, the and lawyer kicked you out. Exactly, so the lawyer said, right. so told Vikram right. to get out. So yeah. I got out right. out of respect because this is not a trial, right. 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 you know, because right. right. this during recess, I got, he said, don't go back in and I said, my boss, he goes, the lawyer said, you're making faces. And I said, well, I can't help my reaction. I'm, I'm picking up the stuff. I'm picking up. I'm, 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 I have, you know, and, and so he said, he doesn't like that. He said, I'm going to misguide the, the jury and this and that. And I'm like, whatever. I don't know. But you got the wrong lawyer, bro. And I said, you know what? You got to, something's wrong with this lawyer. And so that turned into, so I'm outside his Rico's wife is going hysterical. Get back inside. Yeah, right. I don't care what you do. In the next break, sneak yourself inside and be quiet. And I and, and cover your face. And I said, cover my face. I don't have. And, and they were like, whatever. And so I said, I go back in. And I just got a glimpse of of, of you know because I miss a, a, a huge chunk of it. And I'm like, why are you guys going into closing argument? when you didn't even took the stand. And he said, oh, no, no, no. He told us that I don't need to because, and I said, we have a huge amount of witnesses. I mean, like Quincy Jones, Rita Hay, all these people ready to say that you have no discrimination or you have all of this and you're doing what you're doing because you learn how to do it as a, like a military boot camp your style and so you know I'm staying with the with with the contents of what he teaches what he is his personality I don't care if he had bad bedside if he has vulgar language who doesn't swear I swear right, you know exactly, what I mean yes, who cares yes, yes, yes and so all of this and I knew that there was a, somebody who's sitting there who's literally have a, a warrant for her arrest for deceiving people in the Cayman Islands under a Ponzi scheme that she did. And this was a girl that was suing him. Sue him. <clears throat> okay, but you had all that information. I had all that information. And and they don't and then it's like her credibility people. Her husband is in jail and when when her husband went into jail, she quit the company. Where are these missing a millions of dollars? So anyways So anyways it's like that's a whole different animal over there. So you so did were you able like so I went over there, and they're already in there in closing argument. And I said, you didn't even defend yourself. How can you go into closing argument? He goes, oh, because the lawyer knows what he's doing. No. And I said, no, no, no. This is going to be a huge disaster. You can't even voice your, your rights. And you're believing everything that this man is saying. This is something wrong. This is something wrong. And I said, you know what? It's not my case. I don't know. Maybe it was right. Maybe I need to back, back, back away from all of this. Next thing you know, eight point million dollar judgment against it. So Did now, they make an appeal? so now here we are. That he's guilty without a fair trial. He's not in debt with punitive damage to this scam artist. And now everybody's here a jury? Yes. And, and now you have this Me Too movement on your back. You have now Bill Crosby, Harvey Weinstein, and all of them is coming out of, like I said, like all of these things are going to start to evolve because somebody saw this big, huge punitive damage that this woman won. That she doesn't even have any kind of claim. claim. She didn't go, if she was so-called 
assaulted and so-called all of this, how come she doesn't have any medical records? How come in this short time of period and all of this happening in headquarters? And on top of that, she's not a licensed lawyer. And look at the work that she was doing. And so, I mean, I had the whole entire nine yard. And so that became into another thing. Everybody screaming and yelling, me too, me too. You know, you're getting people out from Hollywood, all these things. And so his lawyer said, you know what, back up your bags and leave. And I'm like, uh, hello? <laughs> his lawyer told you to pack up your no. bags? No, told Bikram uh, to pack up his bag and leave. It's gonna get worse. And so there's an appeal in work I can't leave after six months because I'm literally stuck over here because I'm a walking, talking encyclopedia, Google, you know, that got locked in here because that's not, you know, because being intuitive, you have a gift of memorizing things, you know? And so, oh, boy. So anyways, did, did you get it through the appeal? We went through the appeal and once again, and that lawyer, no, 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 this is a different one. And I kept on telling him the pain point, this and that. I went to all the different courts. I told this, I was, and you know what? It just became gush. Because you had way too much movement already. When you have a movement, hashtag me too, it was huge during the back of the days. You have an uphill battle. So all these other cases that came in, we have to deal with six other cases, plus this other two other cases, another case coming in, another thing coming, and I'm stuck at headquarters with all of this mess. And everybody hates you. Everybody in headquarters hates you. Because I'm finally running a company where I'm finally making these people work. They don't like that wellness Wednesday meeting. Every Wednesday we have these meetings and they hate it, they hate it. They try to frame me, they try to do everything. Everything in their power, but I just didn't fall for that. Well, let's go drinking with the lawyers today. Ah, uh, no, no thank you. So I knew how to be by myself. And so that lasted all the way through. And you know, even though all these appeals and all these things to deal with insurance company to settle with all these lawyers, this man end up with no money. Yes, then you right. have some other people come in and they said, oh, we can help you if you go through bankruptcy. So you have to file for bankruptcy and all that stuff. And, and that's when I said in Japan, you know, and my dog, I knew it was like, oh, deja vu. By then, my dog Heaven is there. Heaven was really good. And then she got sick. And then when we went to the vet's office, I told them that something is wrong. And they're like, no, she already has a kidney problem. And I said, no, it was created by something else. They're like, who are you? How do you know? I said, it's her inner female organs. Because she just had her heat. She's bleeding. This is an abnormality of what's going on. We need to do this. And she didn't. And Vet, she was a newbie, and so she was like, no, da, da, da. I already told you, she already has kidney, you gotta go on this diet, and I was like, oh God, not this again. So that really pumped me up. And you decided to go back and, and so, get your, you gotta look at me, just somebody with a little white speck right here. Oh, thank you. Yes, and and so that's when I just said, you know what, I need to get my micro bubble machine. I went back home. That thing been sitting there for like ages, years and years. So I put it back. Here we go again. It's not working. So I said, okay. I called my girls, my you know, in Japan, and I said, look for a company. Make me like, another one. Okay. Make me. I have an idea, but I don't care what it is. What is the newest one that's out there? Went there, talked to this guy, and he's like, oh my God, I know who you are. You're the Hawaiian water goddess for dogs. <laughs> and I said, oh, wow, I'm honored, thank you. He said, I know who you are. And I said, oh, thank you. <laughs> so I said, can I get my machine? So I went there, of course, they gave me all this thing, and then I thought one hour meeting ended up to be seven hours of oh, meeting. Nice. 
And so I brought back the machine, started using it to heaven, started doing it in the bathtub, and of course I'm getting electrocuted because the voltage is different. Gotta get that, went to Amazon. I think every step up they had in Amazon, I bought, and I had to return it because none of them were. <sighs> and that was another thing, but it worked. Where, you know, and I said, Mom, just send me that. So I went back, and my mom was like, I don't know which one to send already. So I got the old school one, brought it back over there, the, the transformer, and used that. And I said, okay. Next thing you know, $5,000 plus dollars later for that emergency surgery, because Heaven literally fainted after that doctor's appointment. Three days later, she fainted and gushing brown stuff from her back of her, you know, fufu. And I said, oh my God. And I we took her to West Hollywood emergency because that's only 24 hour. She had pyrometria and that exploded. And if they don't fix that, because it's all, it's like the sewer just broke the pipe. And that's why she was leaking and that's why she was getting kidney problem. And I said, I told, and I was so angry. And I said, okay, whatever it takes to do that. So that's what motivated me to bring back, yell and scream at the vet at Beverly Hills. And he was like, okay, please, we'll, we'll work it out. Because I had all the evidence. Like, I didn't I told you so? It was her female part, but I couldn't figure out exactly what it was because I kept on feeling her. So anyway, so that makes it, does that motivated me. I brought back heaven into like this skinny dog was like that at the park. Boom! Next thing you know, she's running like a crazy dog at back at the park. And everybody's like, what happened? And I said, medical micro bubble is back. And so the thing is, is that with kidney problem, you can't undo it. And because she leaked so much into her system, the only thing I did, can do is give her preventative care. As a machine took care of all of that. And that machine and my technique took care of all of that. But you can't, it's like, you know, when you go, when you have to go dialysis and you have to get that to flush. I was really using that as my dialysis to flush all that toxin out of her body. But of course, you know, her inner organs and her being 10 years old, You know, it was time and I was giving her insulin because she was dehydrating and I would give her insulin and there's this one ins picture I had it was a picture of a heart because there was a needle with her insulin going in not insulin but her you know her IV yeah. and Lily it was the shape of a heart like oh my god okay it's coming no, she just know. you know and so I said, okay, heaven. So I just did what, she, you know, the natural process made her flu naturally, I did everything into her. The day she passed away, which was on December the 4th. And how old was she then? She was 10 years old. Is that old for a dog? Um, for a minion sized dog, they usually, you know, between 10 and 13, some oh. last to 15 if they're lucky. Right, right. But like Coco died at seven. Oh. So heaven, died at, because of that. She could have lived longer. Jordan passed away at 13 because we caught it at the right time at the right moment. So he had a good, nice life. And so... Do you have one now? Do you have a dog now? Oh, no. No dogs now? No, I thought you saw you saw my dog over no, here. No, no. Sometimes they follow me. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, she's over here again? <laughs> the other day I had, I had a... Um, chicken following me. I was on a walk and I was wondering why everybody was laughing and smiling at me and I turned around and I saw like a chicken following me and I'm like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> so I said, come on chicken, let's go for a walk. I don't have a leash. So anyway, so literally that what really prompted me and you know, with my meeting with Japan and I said, I called him up and I said, thank you for giving me that extra life and my purpose. And obviously, you know, I wasn't getting paid and things were happening in LA and I just like, so when 2020 happened, he got away. Oh, he was, 
no, they stopped because he was losing money. Right, 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 right. And you know, he wasn't paying me in 2000, end of 2019. Now I have a, you know, my dog just died, and I was like, oh my god, it's so time when to you go. Came back. And January came and he's like, no way, things are gonna be okay. And I said, you know, my dog died, I'm empty, I need family. And I'm by here by myself and there's something weird. I don't know what it is, but something weird is really bad, it's gonna happen over here. And he's like, what is wrong with you? And I said, I don't know, it's this thing. And I go, you know, he goes, yeah, I know. I said, he goes, well, maybe I'll just pass by in January. You just sit, and so I said, okay. And I'm already, I already wrote to the landlord, like, I'm leaving here. So February came and I said, that's it, that's it. Because I went to the doctor for my appointment and I didn't feel right. Because Cedar Sinai was right next door to me where I was living in Beverly Hills. And I said, something is just weird. I don't know what it is, but something is weird. And plus I got sick, but it wasn't like, like something, I, would, I don't know what it was. But it, I don't know what it was, but I then, you know, before I left, I said, listen, I'm gonna go back to Hawaii. I don't feel good. I need to have my full body checkup. So I did that. February, I remember Super Bowl Sunday, I said, I gotta go find myself a storage place. And so I really found one. Luckily, you would never find in LA where you can put your car in your apartment. And she said, it's weird. We have one open today. They just moved out this weekend. And it was Super Bowl Sunday and I'm saying, I'm gonna get it. Uh, give, me, give me the key. I gotta watch my Super Bowl Sunday. Let's do it. And I just, every night, I will go and pack my car, drive down, little by little. And then I said, you know what? I'm leaving in March. I gotta go. I wanna go home before my birthday. I gotta go. Cause March 7th is my birthday. So everything is packed, I'm ready to go, and then the lawyers found out that I'm leaving. They didn't like that, because there goes their intel information, because he's in bankruptcy. He's going to roll up this stuff. So that he got a new lawyer that knew that he knew what was going on? Well, not really, because a lot of lawyers left him because he wasn't paying them. And Simon retired and said, Monica, this is not good for you. Me and June, we're leaving to Italy. I'm going to take an early retirement. He's not paying me, it's an in-house lawyer. So really, I didn't, you know, it was time for go already. So I came back in March, and I was like a hysterical person, like, Mom, da 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 She said, what is wrong with you? Your mom's over here. Yeah, my mom is over here, everybody's over here. So I start, you know, whatever I had a feeling of, I said this, da da da, and they're like, oh my God. And next thing you know, a week later, boom, lockdown. The pandemic happened. And it's weird because when you see my picture in January, I'm already wearing a mask. I'm already saying, making like videos back in January and saying about because I was sick and I wasn't like really sick, but I was sick. Do but I felt happy. Um, I don't know, but. By the time in February, I went to the doctors and I did the whole entire body check because January I was feeling weird. And I felt sick, but I couldn't get rid of the cold. I mean, my cough. Yeah, my kid ended up with something and he swears when they found out it was cold and he said, oh my God, I think that's what happened. And that's why he diagnosed it because it was before anybody knew it. Exactly. And it was so weird because, you know, while I was out there, you meet people. Yeah, and you probably became immune because you had it. And, you know, some of the people I met was kind of interesting. And some of the information and things that they sent to me was like, this is weird. Like, that's what really triggered me in 2018. Like, why are they doing this? Like, what is this thing? And I'll show you that, that picture when he literally showed, and that was back in July of 2018. And that's when it was like all these things that you, because especially me looking through a different lens from Hawaii, you see things differently. Mainland people, they're so used to all of that, right? But we come from an island. 
So our eyes are looking at things through a different lens. And so I'm like, what are they doing over there? Oh, this is so weird. What are they doing over there? Or, you know, you know, and then I found out that they have crisis actors and actors down the street by my by my house. In fact, that guy went to UCLA and he created a huge business down the street over there. So I used to always watch them and say, why are they running over there? Like weird things that they would do. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay. And the next thing you know, you see all of these things happening. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to go into conspiracy theory. I'm not going to go into all that stuff because that is just way too not my energy. And so during that time, the pandemic, everybody came out of the woodworks of that, that energy of hate. That energy of humanity of, you know, so I had to shut all of that down and I said, got back on the phone and I said, you know what, Japan, I'm telling you, DIY, didn't I tell you? And they're like, わかりました. we have nothing else better to do than to challenge and make your machine. Yeah. And now so the engineer, can. finally, I mean, this is like, you know? So finally, Chacho calls me up and he said, okay, engineer. He said, okay, let's do it. So during that time, I was so busy. My mind was just, you know, we don't need electricity. We need this, we need that. We need something that doesn't weigh 30 pounds, 50 pounds. We need something that is compact, eco-friendly, that does the work with the power of water and the technique. That's all you need, people, because we're gonna go into this huge crisis of skyrocket. When you have pandemic, things are gonna go up. We need to figure out the solution. And so that's when I put everything all together, my project, and here we are today. So in a short, long version, <laughs> all because of this bubble. And you're doing it out of your home. Because, you know, we were stuck at home. Yeah, but you're doing it out of your oh, home. Oh, everything is all uh, back at, so it came back in full circle. Literally came back in full circle, but now everything, because we were told to stay home. So I said, okay, I might take advantage of the situation and stay home, I'm an introvert and I like this geeky stuff, so. Why not take this opportunity? Right. It's knocking on me right now, now that I finally got my tools. I watched this man build something and create it into a huge franchise. Yeah. Franchise does not work, why? Right. So let's <laughs> figure out what works. And so during that 2018, 2019, yeah. this thing called affiliate marketing started to creep this way into the market, like how we have the Bitcoin, the NFT for artists, yeah. you know? And so it's like, I gotta, I gotta figure this thing out. This is a new now. I don't care what anybody say, after a pandemic, there's gonna be a new now. Okay. Let's eat. Let's say part two. Okay. <laughs> <Let's eat>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, cow cow time.